Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and today I'm going to be doing my weekly reading wrap up from May 13 to the 19th. I ended up reading nine books this week, which is really good for me. And I read a mixture of romance and some thrillers, mystery type books. I read a couple of arcs. I read a ton of library books. So I actually do not have any physical books here to talk about because I returned all my library books back to the library and obviously the arcs were on my Kindle. So yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't have any physical books to talk about. I had both a really good reading week and a really bad reading week. I read some great books and I read some kind of bad books as well. I will link all of these down below. I'd love to hear if you guys have read these and your opinions and let's get right into it. The first book I have to talk about is Flirting with Forever by Kendall Ryan. This is a friends to lovers romance about three friends named Jack, Cam, and Natalie. They've been friends since high school and Cam and Jack always agreed that neither of them would ever go out with Natalie because it would ruin their friendship. But over the years, it's been a long time since then, Cam has developed feelings for Natalie. And little does he know that Natalie also harbors some feelings for him. So we're seeing through both perspectives of Cam and Natalie and them trying to decide if they should act upon their feelings, especially considering they have this friendship with Jack and they don't want to ruin that friendship. And they kind of have a one night stand at a wedding, I think it is, or a vacation. And we kind of go from there. And this was a really cute, lighthearted, sweet romance. And sometimes I'm really in the mood for just really cute romances and this definitely fit the bill and I gave it four stars. The next book that I read is Closer Than You Think by Darren O'Sullivan and this is a psychological thriller that I really enjoyed. It was about a small town in Ireland and 10 years ago there was a serial killer on the loose named the Blackout Killer and they called him that because he would cut the power to a neighborhood and then murder people in the dark in their home and there's only been one survivor of the Blackout Killer and her name is Claire and she's been living with the consequences of this tragedy for 10 years and it really has inhibited her life and it's been really hard for her but she's been trying to move on and she's starting to make steps in the right direction after 10 years but things are not going so great all of a sudden when another body is found that is murdered in a similar way to the blackout killer but the blackout killer seemingly had been found and died in prison and so they think it's a copycat that is doing this murdering but it isn't and the blackout killer is back and has it out for Claire. So you're following both Claire as well as the Blackout Killer. And this was a really good thriller. I didn't guess all of the twists. I thought I had it figured out. And it has one of those double reveals at the end where you think you know what's going on. And then when it happens, I was like, yes, I was right. And then something else happens and I was completely wrong. And I love that about it. And this was really good. It was a little bit of a slow burn, but in all the best ways. I ended up giving this one four stars. And this one, I believe, already is published. It was still available on NetGalley, but it is published already if you're interested in it. The next book that I have to talk about is The Twilight Wife by A.J. Banner. This is my first read by this author. I had checked it out from my library. And this one I heard about from Nicole at the Girly Girl Bookworm, and she enjoyed it, and so I really wanted to pick it up. This is about a woman named Kira who wakes up and she had been in an accident, a scuba diving accident, and she doesn't have any memory of the last four years, and that includes being married to her husband, Jacob. And he brings her back home to kind of recover in the hopes that she'll get her memories back, and she's just trying to go with her like normal routine. And they live on this really tiny island off of Washington near Seattle, and there's not a lot of civilization there. The, there's not a lot of internet or phone service and so they're kind of away from society and she starts to realize that maybe her marriage is not as perfect as Jacob makes it seem and how everyone tells her it is and by the time she figures out what's going on she's kind of stuck on this island so it's this kind of domestic thriller and it's nothing super original but it's really enjoyable I liked it a lot I ended up giving it three and a half stars. The next one I have to talk about is Only Him by Melanie Harlow. This is the second book in the One and Only series. This follows the youngest sister in the series named Marin, and she is a yoga instructor and she's pretty zen with her life, but she's been lately struggling with some nightmares that she thinks have to do with her unresolved feelings for a guy that she dated in high school named Dallas. He kind of left without saying goodbye to her when they were 17 and it's been 12 years and she hasn't been able to get over him. And Dallas moved across the country. He was shipped away in high school because he was kind of a bad boy and now he lives in Portland 
and he's a tattoo artist, but he's brought back to the East Coast to see his brother, and on his way there, he decides to stop in and see Marin after 12 years and apologize to her. So it's pretty much a shock for Marin that he shows up on her doorstep, and it's kind of a second chance romance between them. I don't really want to say much else and give anything away, but yes, it's Marin and Dallas's second chance romance. This was pretty cute. There were some things I didn't like about it. I didn't really enjoy how easily Marin forgave Dallas. If it were me, I probably wouldn't have been that way, but it wasn't my favorite part of the story. Um, but I still ended up giving this one 3.75 stars, and I can't wait to finish off the series. The next book that I read is The Bride Test by Helen Hawang. I actually listened to this on audio from Hoopla, and I'm usually not an audiobook fan, but this one I really liked. I split it up into four days and listened to a portion every day, and I think that made me really enjoy it and savor it. And I'm sure you guys know what this is about, but it is a companion novel to The Kiss Quotient. It has some similar characters in it, and it is about a guy named Kai and a woman named Esme. So Kai is on the spectrum and he has a really hard time with social situations, he doesn't date, and his mom is really worried about him being alone forever. So she goes to Vietnam to find him a bride and she meets Esme who works as a janitor at a hotel and basically she takes Esme to the US to be his wife. She moves in with him and Kai wants nothing to do with Esme. But before long, obviously, she grows on him. We see it through both the perspective of Esme and Kai. And I found this one to be actually really funny. And I loved how it was on audio. I think it helped me enjoy it more. And I ended up giving this one four stars. The next book that I read is another arc, and it is called A Face in the Crowd by Carrie Wilkinson. This is a suspense thriller novel. I would say it's a little more suspense, and it is about a woman named Lucy who five years ago her boyfriend died in a train accident, and after he died she discovered he wasn't who she thought he was, and she's been living with the consequences of that ever since, and she struggles really poorly financially. One day she gets home after work, she commutes on the bus, and she notices there's a huge envelope in her bag and is full of thousands of dollars, and she doesn't know how it got there, and she doesn't think she should spend it, but of course she gets very tempted because this money could save her life, or could it? It actually ends up ruining her life. And this is a slow burn suspense, so the first 50% of it, not a whole lot happened. You're waiting for this thing to happen and kind of all this build up and I really hated the twist at the end. I thought it was so improbable and so unbelievable and it didn't make the whole waiting part worth it and so I ended up giving this one two and a half stars and this one I believe comes out in June. The next book that I have to talk about is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory and I thought this book was so cute. It is about Drew and Alexa. They meet in an elevator and it breaks down and they kind of get stuck there and they have this really cute banter together and kind of get to know each other and when they're parting ways after the elevator comes to again, Drew asks Alexa to attend a wedding with him that weekend and surprisingly she says yes. So they end up going to the rehearsal dinner together and the wedding together and he asks that she is his fake girlfriend during the reception and everything. And so it's them kind of fake dating. And of course it blossoms into more than that. And he lives in LA and she lives in Northern California in Berkeley. And so they kind of have to manage what it would be like if they wanted to date long distance. And this one was such a cute, lighthearted, quick read. And I thoroughly enjoyed it and cannot wait to finish this companion series. I gave this one four stars. The next book that I read is The River at Night by Erica Farinick, and this one I also checked out from the library, and this one is a thriller, kind of an adventure thriller. It is about four women who are, I think, in their 30s, and they decide to go on a river rafting camping trip together, and one of them of the friends is super adventurous, and it's all her idea, whereas the other three are a little more wary, and they're not really into that stuff, but they decide to do it because they don't want to be left out, and so they all go to the middle of nowhere in Maine to do this river rafting trip. And it's kind of a slow atmospheric book, the first third of it, and then the second two thirds are very quick, and it's action packed. So as you can imagine, a lot of bad things happen in the woods, a lot of bad things can happen while you're river rafting, and anything that you think could go wrong does go wrong. I don't really want to say much else about the plot, but I wasn't a huge fan of this book. I didn't like how slow and atmospheric the beginning was, and then the second two thirds, so many bad things happen. 
and you are not given enough time to process those things. And so this one was a miss. I was hoping to love it because I love river rafting, but I didn't. So I ended up giving this one two and a half stars. The last book that I read is All Her Secrets by Sue Watson, and this one comes out May 23rd, so it comes out really soon. So this is a domestic suspense about a woman named Lucy. She is your average 40-something woman. She's a teacher, she's a wife, she's married to a guy named Matt, and they never ended up having children because they were unable to. And so she has a hard time relating to her friends that are her coworkers and her neighbors because they all have kids and she doesn't. So when a woman named Amber moves in next door to her, she gets really excited because this woman is single, she doesn't have children, she's a newscaster, and she appears to be really glamorous. So Lucy quickly becomes her friend and kind of leeches onto her and almost becomes obsessive. And Amber is used to being in the spotlight because she is on television, but she starts receiving some weird gifts and text messages that lead her to believe she's being stalked. And so Lucy definitely wants to protect Amber and even offers for Amber to move in with her and her husband. And of course, when she lets Amber into her home, things kind of go awry and she realizes she doesn't really know who Amber is. And you're kind of wondering, who can we trust? Can we trust Amber? Can we trust Lucy? Can we trust neither of them? And it's definitely a scenario that I've seen so many times in books where you are supposed to trust someone and then they're not very trustworthy. But I really still enjoyed it. There was something that kept me turning the pages and wanting to read this. So I ended up giving it 3.25 stars. So those are all the books that I ended up reading this week. I will link them all down below and I will see you guys on my next one. Bye.